Yes. So before we start with the tutorial, um, I want some of you to raise hand and just tell me how you ask, uh, how you are going with the data schema. Uh, I would love to hear how you are planning to do the schema of the data that was shared by you. It's just to share ideas uh, from, from the group members. At least one of you, two, if you can share. Should I call names or, or if there is uh, one of you who are confused how you can manipulate the data because the data is too much? So I'm just gonna assume you already you guys have a good plan, so you don't have to talk about it. We can go back to the tutorial then. Okay, uh, Jabez. Okay, so we are uh, uh, we build a schema for all the tables, and I think we are uh, we discuss about it, and we agree on to use all the tables for uh, on the Postgres to uh, import the CSV files on Postgres and to use all the tables on the reader so that. Uh, we can uh, train uh, uh, the open AI. Uh. Yeah. Uh, did you find some connection? I, I mean, uh, for example, for the one folder, for the cities folder, there are three CSV files, right? Yes. Do you merge them or what did you do on those files? Yeah. We discuss about merging because they are, uh, there are uh, uh, columns who are similar. And yeah. we can, but uh, we talked about it. But uh, we said that we need all the information uh, for the open AI. Okay. Let's uh, let's hear Kumi. Would you you can share your? Oh, okay. I think about it. Uh, there is a kind of I uh, think. Uh, some tables, uh, for example, in a given folder, uh, some tables are just like summaries of the chat data. Uh, maybe with some additional information for the table data. But most of the time, I think for most of the files, um, the total data, they are basically like a kind of summary and um, just a kind of additional information for the table data. So I don't really know. We will discuss with between us and we decided to keep uh, just the two tables, like um, the table data and uh, and uh, the chart data. But we are still not very sure about it. So I don't know if we can have any clarification on it. And also, we there is it is hard to find a kind of relationship between. You guys have a fair. Yeah, okay. Your voice just keep losing as the mirror to me. Can I go ahead? Yeah, you can okay. go ahead. I was saying like, there is also a kind of it is like <clears throat> it's hard to find a kind of relationship between uh, all these tables, like all these folders. I don't know if we should, we should, but like I'm not finding something like relationship between them, and it is becoming hard to build a schema because I feel like for the schema we should have a kind of relationship between the different folder. Yeah, Kumi, you can share your thoughts. 
So uh, there isn't much relationship with the between each holder. I mean, the uh, left file. I think that, uh, that so there isn't much connection between the folders with each other. So you can pass all the folders as one table, but you can make maybe some merging inside the folder, or you can pass like JavaScript there as well. But like I told you from my previous experience, these tables can cause uh, maximum token limit for the LLM. So maybe you can drop the traffic data and work on the table data and chart data. That could be an option as well. And maybe you can find some kind of algorithm to connect the two without, I mean, there are similar columns within the chart, the table and the total table, right? So maybe we, you can find some kind of uh, SQL query if there is if the column's value is different to drop it, but if it is just to take that one, I don't know. It's just to just to give you an idea, not to just pass everything to the LLM. If the maximum token doesn't happen, you can do that. The LLM right. will be analyzing that. Okay, I think the when we take the uh, like um, the table data. It's basically like a kind of summary, like it's not really like uh, maybe individual based on some individuals or I don't know. Videos? Yeah, so, it's kind of a summary. Yeah, so you. So what's the question? I'm, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not understanding uh, what you are talking about merging. Like if I take the uh, table data and the chart data, I'm not seeing uh, what I should be merging. Everyone. The voice keeps losing at the mirror. Can you hear me? Please, can you hear me? Okay. So I was saying that uh, if you take uh, and here you are. the table data and uh, the chart data for each folder, um, the, the table data is basically like a kind of summary. And I've, I'm seeing. I can get you. So can you yeah, hear me now? Right now. Okay, I was saying that if we take uh, the table data and um, the chart data, the, the table data is basically like a kind of summary in each folder. But, and so based on that, I'm not seeing the, like how we should be merging them, like the table data and the chart data. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying directly, versions, just give them condition. Like, if some of the column values, uh, you are, let's say there is, uh, for the series, uh, I'm not sure, but let's say there is two column names, right? Similar on the chart table and the yeah. table step. Yeah. yeah. So you can pick that column name and you can give it a condition. If those column, the date is similar on both sides, right? The date column, you can connect on those. So both in the date column and if the value from the chart table in that particular column and in, in that the table column and if the value is similar you can take that value if it's different you can drop it it's just one way it's not the right it's not the only way it's just an idea just to give you if the value is different similar on the same on that on that date in that particular for the two columns you can take that column Pick the common values from that column and uh, that common uh, column and name. The column, the common value is for each row, and you can put it on the same on any column. And. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you is it uh, Travis? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Maybe? Yes. Yes. So you can just. 
do some kind of you can be creative but it's just one way i, I want to if it if that's help i want to mention that one yeah uh, if uh, i think uh, the objective is the Imposter. business objective yes, they, Table, you can drop it if you want. Hello, yeah. Yeah, so if 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 some of the value on the some elements are not uh, necessarily for the business objective, we can drop them, yes? Yes, we, you can drop them. Okay. Make as much as possible, we'll try to minimize the data for so that the LLM can uh, doesn't pass the LLM's maximum limit, token limit. Okay. And the other question, if it's okay, you can ask? Yeah, you can ask. Uh, when we add uh, the data, the, uh, we can see it on the query, on the uh, readers. Uh, does that mean it is accessible for the uh, chat add-on? And the other question is, how, can we, uh, how are we going to uh, write uh, a prompt engineering code for the um, so that the chat uh, add-on can learn our uh, data. Is that we, where do we write the code? So, so there is a query. So when you fetch the data, connect the data with the Postgres database, and you see the data on the query page, or right, I think you see yeah. it on the query page. So it means there is a backend uh, REST API URL that is access the, fetching the data from the database and displaying it on the, the query user interface, right? Yeah, okay, so where where is that? Uh, so That is I, what I, you, you should figure out. So on the, go to the source code and figure out on the, I, I think if you see, if you really see the redirect source code, I think you will be able to find it. I, I did okay. mention api.py on the handlers folder is for all the REST APIs URLs are found. So start from there, and you can just go uh, find the each REST APIs function, which that function that particular uh, REST API URL is redirecting which function is calling. You can find it in that particular file. So you can start from the API.py file in the handlers folder in the redash source code. So it's automatically. So Updating so the code. Yeah. Uh, I'm adding, uh, so could you repeat that one? So when uh, I uh, when I'm connecting or when I see the query on the UI, is the source code uh, automatically updating? No, the REST API is fetching that data from the Postgres database. It's already a built-in functionality of Redash. Okay. What you have to do is fetch that URL, which is fetching the data and posting it on the web server, which means you, you got access to the data. If you can find, if you can identify which file is uh, fetching that query from the database, which means that particular REST API URL is your getaway. So you can pass that uh, every time that. Uh, REST API is trigger, you can pass that information to the LLM also. Okay. You get it right now, right? So. Yeah, you can you give me also a hint? Yes. Okay. For the prompt also engineering? The, yeah. Yeah, what is your understanding of prompt engineering? So, what I understand is that we have to. After uh, connecting or selecting the query, uh, the Redash add-on can uh, have to be trained on the uh, on the data so that it will uh, give us uh, an answer when we ask it on the bot. It should be able to uh, give us a, a reply. So we have to train it on our code, on our data. Yeah, exactly, you have to train it on your data. So what does the prompt no. engineering purpose? Uh, this scenario you just mentioned to me, but the other should do. Yeah. What is the exact purpose of prompt engineering? So the prompt engineering part concept. 
what does it do so prompt engineering is giving uh, uh, a text to the to the uh, uh, chat uh, add on or medium, right? of that it could give us a proper answer yeah so the prompt engineering is just creating a design to instruct a learning to do something so the prompt is there's a lot of designs how you should write your instruction so that the LLM should know how to answer the user question based on your prompt engineering design that you tell them to do, that you tell the model to do. So maybe you in the prompt engineering, you can design the prompt. If there's, a, you can just also instruct the LLM for the model to answer user question based on some kind of format that you think is fit. So you can give it an example format. So if when people ask you about this question, you should answer them in this format. This is part of the prompt engineering, how you instruct the LLM to do something, uh, how the, you instruct the LLM to understand the data that it gets from the queries and be responsive to user response. That is where the prompt engineering concept comes in, right? How you write your prompt to instruct the LLM to do something. Yeah. I hope that's clear now. Yeah, it's clear. So I should find uh, 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 on the source code where uh, I write this uh, this this code for the prompt no, engineering. The prompt engineering is written on the LLM part, on the LLM side of your code. Yeah. What you have to do is fetch the REST API, which fetch queries, and pass it to your LLM. Because the REST APIs, once you find them, you can access them everywhere because they are already set up, the dash REST APIs, you can access for, for accessing REST APIs, the only thing you have to do is call that uh, REST API URL, right? That's how yeah. you do it. If you got that URL, you can access it on your LLM backend code. Maybe you okay. might try to find some kind of event triggering because when some uh, one connect their data to the query, uh, so that LLM can find that data right away. Can create some kind of event to invoke the LLM to access that data. Okay. I think it's a good start. Yeah, I think so. So is there a one data? Is that question answered or? So uh, if that's the case, I think we should go back to the tutorials. So today we're going to talk about uh, LLM agents. So this is one of agents are one function that you can find in the AI world, in the artificial intelligence world. So we can we will learn about them, what they are, what they can do. So LLM agents represent a powerful framework for solving complex embodied ta tasks by leveraging LLM as a central computational engine. So when you have these complex uh, tasks that needs other tools to be fixed, other than the LLM, you will use agents to do that computational uh, task. So still LLM will be the central computational engine, which means the agent will do some task somewhere and they transfer the data to the LLM and LLM answer the user after acquiring the, the computational answer or well, for complex tasks, depending on what project you're using, you might need agents to apply to your project. So we're gonna say it almost so it will be clear, but that is a concept behind the agents. They will be like a middleman at the center. They will transfer data between the LLM and the, the agents are connected with tools. These tools could be anything. It could be a Flask uh, in back in the code. It could be a Wikipedia page that you are trying to connect. You are connected, connecting with to uh, get um, current data for user questions. It could be anything. The tool could be anything. The agents will be the middle map passing the data and the question to those tools get the response and pass it to the LLM. So LLM can have more better answer for the user. Just give me a second.
I'm sorry about that. Uh, so that is the purpose of agency. That's what they're doing. So if there's any complex tasks your application is doing, they might come handy for having a smooth interaction with users with, with their questions. So they are typically built using frameworks or platforms that provide infra infra infrastructure of LLA. Uh, so natural language processing and dialogue management, they can be applied in chat books, virtual assistant, customer support, any other AI application, uh, they can be applied in all of them, depending on how much, uh, what this uh, application uh, task is. So, so so in, they will be handy depending on the project requirements. So the agents are designed to interact with users or other systems through natural language. So how you'll interact with them is again similar with the current the way you are interacting with LLA. Natural language will be used by the users. And when the response is also after the final process is done, when the response is returned to the user, it will be again with a natural language, but behind the scene they do a lot of work. So this is how the agent will look like. The LLM would be there, the agent like the middle end, the agent connected with these tools. These tools can be anything, it could be another external I mean, API, REST API that gives you some data, maybe it could be image, it could be current status of some information, it could be a backend code that do some computational mathematics, computational depending on the project. It could be any code so that do some kind of algorithm. So it will the agent will pass the user question from the LLM they get to those tools. Those tools will do their own thing depending on how you're planning to use them and return the response. And the agent will pass through the LLM and the LLM will transfer that answer to the user with the natural language. So this is how agents perform this task. So these are components of LLA, uh, I mean agents. There will be an agent, uh, L, I mean there will be an LLA, of course it, it will be the central manager, and there will, the prompt which LLM will be instructed to. Uh, the memory in planning indicates just LLM, um, the memory is not just the one that I talked to. I talked about the, uh, in the morning. It's predicting. Um, it's giving the LLM a memory storage, so it can remember previous conversation or previous data, at least for some duration. So it's just uh, that is when you say memory indicates me making the LLM more uh, not forgetful, so it can remember previous data new previous data. So planning uh, in the knowledge LLM will get will be the already print 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 data LLM already has. LLM has a strain on thousands of data sets, right? The current LLM model. So this the knowledge of LLM, the already existing knowledge that all the data sets that LLM is currently trained on. And the agent will be here that are connected with the tools and the tools and the agents are connected with the LMs. So this is how just a, a simple flowchart to just show you uh, the agent's connection with the LLM. So uh, we said LLM, LLMs, I mean agents are built in frameworks. So there are several frameworks that contain agents in them. One of those frameworks would be LangChain. LangChain that has its own agents that can give you this functionality. A Mindex, Highstack is another model. They all have their or agents open AI. Uh, they have their agents, agent functionality in them that can let you do all the, the functionality of agents depending on your project. So uh, these are agent types. They are not the only one, but these are the types that are exist right now. There is Ada, which is OpenAI agent, Lida, Insight, Pilot, that are owned by Microsoft, and also GPT, OpenAI. So these all agents have different purposes. The tools that are connected to is different from each other. For example, Lida, Insight, Pilot are 
connected with tools that do data exploration, data visualization. So uh, you can go ahead and ch check them out. If you can also, you can install them and explore what they can do. They will let you uh, analyze your data, visualize them. Uh, you think st still they are empowered by LLM. They all are empowered by LLM. So they have this model still there. It's connecting with other tools to fetch data on the data, to visualize it, different purposes. Ada and AutoGPT doesn't do data exploration visualization, but they do uh, give you a user interface in other perspectives. So these are agent types that are, are they there a lot as well? This is just one of them. There's a lot of agents out there. So um, I'm gonna recommend you to watch this YouTube video. This is a tutorial given by Abdullah for the last cohort trainees. He, it's actually, he has showed them a demo, uh, his, his own custom, uh, his own project that use agents to visualize data uh, using Jupyter Network and stuff. So I would recommend you to watch that. And the conversation he had with the trains also can be insightful to give you more information about LLM agents, uh, the whole thing when it comes to LLM. So he had an interesting uh, conversation with the trains as well. And he, he also has shown them a demo. So please check that out. It will give you different to see uh, the power of agents with a project, with a demo project. So check that out. There are also these two references on memory of long, uh, long chain, I mean LLM. So what does memory in LLM means? Uh, this YouTube video also will give you hints how you can add memory to your LLM. So check them out. Uh, but we will see this demo on the long chain. We will focus on the agents of long chain. So if you go into the documentation and search agents, I will uh, show you this part. So this is the LLM agent of long chain. Uh, it's an import that you will import and use. So let's just see how you can create your custom agent. So it's a very simple step. So this is the only thing, this is a normal thing. You import the chat open AI model, connect it with the key of the model. Uh, here, GPT 3.5 model version is being used to go. So after that, what the tool is doing is a simple Python fu function. Uh, the only thing the tool currently is doing is uh, return the links of award. You will give it a word and it will return the word links. That is the tool, what it does. So it's just to show you how you can connect the agent with this tool. And the agent is connected with the LLM and how information is passed or with all this pipeline, you are going to connect with each other. So, so this is our tool. Now, let's, this is the tool. You will import the LinkedIn agent and import the tool. You will define it like this. Now you will create the prompt, you will fill the module, whatever instruction you want. You will pass the user query here. Uh, you will pass, this is a structure for the agent. So in the prompt, so just this is what you have to do. Now we are done with the prompt. Now we have to create the agent. We have the tool. The LLM is structured. Now we have to bind, we have to create the agent and bind it with the tool, right? That's the next step. So the agent package is imported, like you see here. After the import is made, you can initialize the agent like this. These are parameters that are included on the agent. So this is indicating there is an input that's coming from the LLM, the user. Uh, the message will be passed, then the prompt, which is the one that you defined here for the LLM to follow. Lang chain it indicates like a pipeline. So this first step will happen, then the second the prompt will happen, then this will happen, then the output will output. So this is a procedure of the pipeline. This will be the final output after going through all this. It's just like a chain. This uh, indicates a chain. After this, 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 this. 
it gives the chain for the parameters. So here we have bind the LLM with the tools. LLM don't bind to bind the tools. We'll bind the LLM with the agent with the tools. So you. So here it's already binded. Now we will call the tools, the bind tools functionality in assigned with a variable here so you call it with a variable which means it will access the tools so after the prompt path, the tools will be accessed then this uh long chain package will output the data from the tools now it also the agent is said the llm said everything is said now what uh left is invoking the agent by passing user's question so after you import the agent executor uh, package here library, you will initialize it with this particular uh, information. That is, you will pass on the executor the agent structure that you specify here, the tools you specify above, the variables they will be passed as a parameter. So the agent executor will automatically take your structure into the flow. So after that, you will call the agent executor and um, uh, and invoke this executor by passing the user question. So let's see what the output looks like. So right away, the executor will enter the chain, which means the chain we created here. Like I told you, this creates a chain. A chain, chain is like something connected with each other, right? Step by step. So. It will enter the chain and it will follow the steps until it gets the output. So finally, after the same step, the tools will be invoked and an output will come for the question. And then once they are the output will finally, the last chain will return the output and it gave back to the LLM and the LLM will output the value of from that, the information that I get from the agent saying there are five readers in the world, you cut, then the chain will be finished. That's it. So this is the simplest version, how you can implement agent for whatever purpose you want. This was, I'm just showing you the simplest version. Uh, there is also another example here that's written a structured output, which you can go ahead on there. I have also put this reference on the slide i just show you the simplest version but if you can see also other examples on the documentation you can find there as well but this is uh, the structure the architecture behind what agents are specifically right in this example i have showed you the llm what the llm agents can do so Uh, is there any question? This is a tutorial. Um, is that clear? The concept behind LLM agents? Uh, Hilary? Yeah, yes, my, I'm, I'm confused uh, about how uh, you're using LLM agents in the, the, the project. Like, what's the purpose in this project? in red dash also first what did you understand from the concepts of agents let's start there what do you think the agents do uh, from what you understand um, no i don't think i understood i thought i did I, um i can't recall Okay, so the purpose of agents is, for example, let's just take the Redash example. So you're going to create an algorithm, right, to fetching the Redash source of I mean, queries, then pass it to the data. I mean, can, let's just forget the Redash it might not be the best example for agents, but maybe the application do some kind of um, Trading analysis, for example, uh, Binance. If you don't, I don't know if you know Binance, or maybe some other financial trading 
information. So when it comes to financial uh, information, it, it needs a current information, right? Gold or other uh, financial, um, many representation, these values, their value is fuel uh, change every day, depending on the economy. So if you want to give that information in your application for some purpose, I don't know what the purpose is, the LLA might not have that information. And this agent will give you the option to connect with, to, with uh, tools, we say them tools. These tools can be, like I showed you this on this custom agent demo code, a simple function that does some computational work, or it could be, this tool could be a tool that's connected with some other API. So this is our financial website who displayed information about the financial status of the world economy have raised APIs and you can use this agent to connect with those tools and every time a user has maybe some kind of information about the concept of uh, value of gold or fuel, you can invoke that agent to answer to get that information from that tool and get back to the give that back to the LLM and the LLM can give the hard answer with a natural language. You get the uh, the idea of agents? Yes. Yes. They just give you this pipe. I don't know how can I, how I will say it, but they give you this option to connect with other algorithms or websites or anything. It could be anything that do some kind of a computational thing that LLM cannot do to give the user to make the user experience more advanced, more smooth. Or a, it depends on the project. You might not use this for the redash. You might you will decide uh, it's okay not to use it. It might not be that much useful for the redash, but for projects that are complex that does need some algorithm behind the work, LLM might not be enough, but LLM have this option to connect with other sources. Okay, so is it like uh, a, a plugin? Let's say when you go to ChatGPT and you want to, to use uh, something like uh, PDF reader also. Is it like plugins? Uh, like a plugin that will help you to assist you to do some other task? Yeah, you can say that. It's, they're like the, the plugin that helps the LLM to be a better uh, responder to the user information. There another question. Well, no, you, you, we can, so we can store the schemas of the agents and then the user prompt and then give. You can try to do that. I guess you will create a backend and connect it with Postgres. Is that what you're thinking, Vinya? So, yeah, that would be the easiest way if but i wouldn't recommend that because we want you to understand the redash source code as well since it's all building for the redash but it could be a loophole for this problem it could be one way so just uh, keep it on your plans so if this doesn't work i i can i can use agent that could be an option as well uh, but try to also make sure to understand the redactors code. That would be much easier to do that. So it's, it's important that you know the redactors code. So try to. I'm not. I'm not gonna say no. Don't do this or don't do that. Just uh, be open to everything and just. Be creative with it. That's the final thing I can say. Um, is there another question? Yes, Larry. My, my question is regarding the da database. Not, not um, mm -hmm. 
So uh, I, let's say uh, in the chat that we have, uh, I could I could like combine the the groups and have the same same number of rows. But uh, what do you recommend? Like I name the columns because you have let's say in the content type or uh, the, there's there's a value called other. Can I like embed embed the name of the file? And then the the value of the color. Let's say like it was content type, and then add content type up. Or uh, if it was uh, device uh, device type Samsung, I say device type Samsung. The color is that a good way? If I'm, I'm more... yeah, I I don't think uh, your question is clear for me, Hilary. So are you asking about connecting the folders with each other or? yeah so in the folders you have the the files My, mine is connecting the files into one into one table but when i'm doing so uh um i'll be having columns that have, have values like unknown and the the unknown is from the it was okay let's say operating system is the operating system there's mac os but there's another one that says unknown so can i like add on the, before I, when I'm naming the column, can I say operating system unknown, underscore unknown, like that, in naming the columns? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. You're just trying to, in a set of unknown, to just give it some kind, some other name, right? For those unknown values? Yes, instead of just unknown, to be descriptive. That you yeah, can... it's okay, you can do that, yeah. Okay, can I get a reaction that you understand the concept behind agents, their purpose? Okay, great. So if there are no more questions, we can end the tutorial. So uh, I'm gonna repeat to watch out the first video on the reference. Uh, it can just give you more ideas what the agents, the agents capability in in LA, okay?